This unit included several different art historical periods, and they overlap confusingly. Basically, you need to know that Rococo and Enlightenment art appeared in the later 18th century. Neoclassical art was the art of revolution and democracy, uh, and that the Napoleonic Wars and industrialization helped usher in Romanticism in the early 19th century. Moving on, realism is a mid-19th century phenomenon, while the Impressionists burst on the art world uh, in the later part of the 19th century, 1870s and 1880s. Got all that? Okay, you've already received a handout of the essay questions. Uh, you've already been, you've been working on the cultural context questions up until now. Uh, somewhat belatedly, we are turning to the other set of 30-minute questions, which have to do uh, with questions of content or style, a wide variety of possibilities. You've actually seen some of these before. Uh, you're going to only need to answer with regard to one work, and it needs to be a work from this unit. You will get one of these three questions, and you can choose your own work. Which question you'll get, you'll find out on the day of the exam. So question one, the representation of light in painting serves a variety of purposes. Question two has to do uh, with the relationship between an artist and a patron. You've actually seen that question before. Question three is the use of art or architecture as propaganda. And we've seen a lot of that in this unit. Lots of questions on this test. There are 80 image-based questions and 35 general multiple choice questions. Um, I'm pretty much going to hand you the multiple choice questions as I usually do. Uh, the, it's the image-based questions where I'm not going to give you anywhere nearly as much information. You're going to see all the images that will be on the test, but you're need, going to need to dig a little bit and make sure you know about them. So I'm not going to read through all of these. I'm just going to have, you're going to have these PowerPoints available on Moodle. Uh, and again, there are a lot of them. By the way, you'll notice that there are a few questions about Mesoamerica. I have five past AP tests that include general multiple choice questions. And there were a few Mesoamerican or Art of the Americas questions. Not a lot. Uh, they're all included here. I don't think any of them are going to prove to be particularly difficult for you, but I figured this was a good time to bring them out. Notice that this unit, there are a number of questions asking you to identify uh, so-and-so as a leading romantic or realist or neoclassical. Because we are dealing with more periods, there's going to be more of this kind of labeling, so just be warned. And this, I believe, is the last set of the random questions. Again, I'm not going to read them out loud. I think it's easier for you to see them on the PowerPoints anyway. But now we move into the images, and there are lots of them. Again, I'm not going to give you the works that show up on the exam, not, nor all the questions. If I think a question is tricky or unfair, then I'll make an exception. By now, you know the drill. You need to know the artist, the approximate date, usually just which century, but in this unit, I think knowing which part of the century, the art historical period, and when it's relevant, the patron and or location. Then you want to think about what makes a work significant in art history. In other words, what is the College Board likely to care about? So what was architecturally significant about this library reading room? And actually, you should be able to answer that just by looking at the picture. This church interior, oops, I should have gotten rid of that uh, little sign at the bottom, is decorated in what architectural style? Which artist from Unit 11 was most influenced by this Flemish Baroque artist's work? The College Board doesn't tell you who he is, but you had him in the last unit. I'm sure you all remember that fellow. Remember the story that goes with this and the technique that the artist used to create this work? It's a new technique uh, that's showing up in this unit. You need to know the name. This and the following image appear together on the exam. You'll see why. They have very similar subjects. One, of course, is a painting and one is a photograph. 
um, know the European and American artists who are especially influenced by this technique. Otherwise, I don't think you're going to think the questions on that are hard. Now, the questions on the painting on the right appeared on your last test, so you're going to see some repeats. You have not seen the painting on the left, although it will remind you of paintings by another female artist. Know which one. The College Board actually isn't expecting you to know the painting on the left. This is one of those images where they've included a painting where you should be able to recognize the period or the genre. I, however, am helping you out. Uh, I'm labeling it, giving you the artist and the title. It's a self-portrait. You heard a lot about this painting. Uh, the date question on this one is pickier and more precise than usual. Be warned. You need to know other artists of the same period and the same nationality. Hint, hint. Okay, famous building that is not in Italy. It does, however, look a lot like a building in England, which you also need to know. The composition of this work should remind you of paintings from which other art historical period? Watch for a tricky date question. I warned you that there are a lot of questions. This image actually showed up in two different sets of image-based questions, as did the slave ship, which you just saw. What other subjects interested the painter who produced this work? Remember, I told you if I thought questions were particularly hard or tricky, I'm throwing them in. Okay, know the series that this was a part of. What kind of a work is it? Why did the artist withdraw it from the exhibition? I think that the questions that accompany this work are actually tougher than most, so don't neglect studying it. Well, no surprise that this famous painting shows up, and it's paired with the following painting, which may be less familiar, although it is in your book. In order to answer uh, really, a couple of questions on these two images. You need to understand what the term didactic means. What is art, didactic art, attempting to accomplish? Look it up. It's a word you need to know. Good SAT word. Okay, I warned you in the podcast that uh, this particular image would be on the test. I had never seen it before. It's not in your textbook. I didn't find any other editions of the textbook. So I think this is another example of where uh, the College Board is asking you to use your broader knowledge of art history to infer information. Um, they do not give the name of the painting or the artist. Uh, I did, and in fact, I talked about this in the podcast, but pay attention. They're ogling a particular painting, which has been reproduced by this artist. What is that painting? Who are these guys? What are they up to? What kind of statues are they looking at? Study that picture. It's actually kind of fun to look at. This image is paired with the one that follows. So why this particular setting? Uh, why is that important in this art historical period? And what earlier artist shows figures with similar body contours, particularly uh, similar elongated bodies? If that isn't enough of a hint, I'll give you another one. Think Mannerist paintings. Okay, you should know this one by now. But this is a little trickier. <coughs> Where was this painting shown? What works helped inspire the painter? Although most of these painters were probably turning over in their graves. Now, the College Board did not identify this painting, so it must be one you're expected to know. The river, hint, hint, takes a pretty distinctive path. The trickiest thing with landscapes, by the way, is that some of them are tend to be classified as romantic, and some as realist. A lot of it has to do with the various qualities that romantic artists imbue landscape with. They, in some ways, personify nature, uh, give it a deeper spiritual significance. The realist painters, particularly those of the Barbizon school, loved to paint landscapes, uh, but they were more capturing what was really there, and they were very interested in the play of light. Okay, last image. And this is paired with the one you just saw. 
uh, for both works, you need to be prepared to answer basic questions about romantic landscape painting, and especially how it manifests itself in America. Also, think about what set romantic landscape painters apart from landscape painters of the Rilla School. I just dropped some hints about that. What did they see in and even beyond nature? Good luck. After this exam, we begin our very last unit before the AP test review.